Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Madden cheese as always. Got another money play video for you guys today. A passing play that to me is a must have in just about any playbook that I'm using. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I use the Green Bay Packers playbook I've mentioned in the past. This is the book that I'm using right now. But you can find this in probably half the playbooks in the game. So, whatever playbook you're using, check out to make sure uh, if your favorite playbook has this. Uh, but this is a, an explosive play that can pretty much home run just about any defense in the game. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Before I get into the video, though, if you guys could do me a little bit of a favor if you like these type of videos or you just want to show support to this channel scroll down a little bit hit the like button and let me know in the comment section uh, because like shares comments all that stuff really helps out my channel and if you like what you see make sure you stick around by hitting the subscribe button other than that let's go and let's get right into the video now the play that i'm going to be focusing on today like i said can be found in a lot of different playbooks under a lot of different formations the formation that's in the playbook that i use is the tight offset te but you can find this in the gun tight pretty much any type formation should have this particular play and the play is the pa scene so this is something that goes by a couple different names also it can go by the buck seams um, there's a lot of different names but it's always going to be something seams sometimes it's it just has the team name in front of it and this play can be run just like this i mean i'm going to show you guys some adjustments but ultimately you don't really have to do any adjustments you can run it just like this and it's going to have a lot of success but i find there's a couple different things you can do that you can really make this play successful now my opponent here uh, he does some sort of base align uh, which really makes this next uh, you know defense hard to read but ultimately this is pretty much the setup that you're going to want to do at least this is the setup that i put out in the past um, this is something that I don't feel you really have to do anymore. I feel like it kind of draws attention to the to the left side because obviously, number one, the motion a lot of times when you're playing live opponents will draw your opponent's attention. Uh, and that's not something that I really want to do. So I really find that, like I said, this is a good setup to do, but I really don't find myself motioning this receiver over anymore. When I put this out probably last year out of the Bucks playbook, this was the adjustments that I was making. I really find it's unnecessary now. I'm going to show you ways that you can run this with way less adjustments to sometimes none at all but if you do it this way the reads pretty much going to be the same i thought this was a cover two the cover two beater is going to be the y route the y route is pretty much going to be the beater no matter what defense it is the streaking b route is really just meant to pull the coverage back so you can still do this it's just going to draw attention to that side based off the fact that there's a motion and there's three receivers over there the user is going to be over there so that's the only real downside but i'm going to run it this way on the very first play because it's still very successful i'm going to give myself a check down as well which is what the a route is really meant to do if i have a receiver left over there Putting him on a slant or putting him on a drag is going to be a good look uh, as a check down. But you can do anything you want with that receiver, in route, whatever. But you can see on this very next play, it was actually a cover three. The, the Y route, if I don't throw this, make this read right away, he's going to break and he's going to be right where the cornerback is. And it's going to be a, a you know incompletion at the very least. So I make a very quick read and I bullet and uh, send him up the field. And I make a very, a very high level throw there. To kind of save that because like i said it was a poor pre-snap but you can see it's still a very explosive play even though i didn't make the read correctly not a lot of plays have as much success against cover two man as this particular play is going to uh starting off though it looks like he's going to switch over to a cover one on the next play which i wasn't expecting but that's fine because this is a very explosive play against that as well so as far as adjustments go i always want to give myself an out which is pretty much just going to be in the form of a zig route either in the x route or the b route or sometimes both given the tight alignment of this formation you're always going to know if you're opponents running man or zone based off of how close the cornerbacks are they don't typically come in this tight when it comes to zone so the formation gives that away very easily so we have a man coverage here i'm going to go ahead i'm going to give him a fake motion like i said a lot of times i'll do it on the on the opposite side because like i said i don't want to draw attention to the side where i'm going to be going give myself a slant there that's going to keep my opponent uh home for the most part if he's using the middle number one he's going to see that motion he's going to think of that motion he's going to follow that motion and then secondly that slant's going to come in his area and basically keep him at home which is what i want because only the only thing that can stop this route is a user man coverage cannot stop this route you can see he immediately gets separation off the line he's probably not even 10 yards down the field before he's completely outside of the coverage and then i really just have to lob bullet pass whatever you want to do really because i had the type of separation i typically love it though especially when it comes to that particular coverage cover one man because there's no safety over the top and you're going to get that pretty much every time so you can see how explosive this is especially against man coverage but like i was saying if you hit your opponent with this one time they're going to remember that so on the very next play here give myself my man check down the zig one more time uh, he's in an obvious man coverage one more time but i already hit him with a one play touchdown so the very next play he's using the safety he just sprints right over there so i'm not going to force that like i said 
said, that's what the zigs are there for. They're good check downs if, if somebody jumps all over that. Uh, both routes are really going to be unstoppable when it comes to man coverage anyway. And since man coverage is one of the most popular defenses in the game this year, we all need more man beaters. Now, in the next game, uh, my opponent's running a cover two man, which is, one, like I was saying before, I run cover two man because there's so few defenses that can hit one play touchdowns against it. It's typically thought of as a very safe, deep coverage type of defense. My opponent right here, though, probably thought the same way. And then, boom, we're hitting them outside of a cover two man. Now, that play, you definitely have to run to the open side of the field to get that type of bullet and pass lead outside to make that play happen. But you can see, even against cover one or cover two man, any man coverage, that route is going to destroy it. So, putting that all together now, uh, this is the second play of the game. I ran one time for five yards. You can see there's still, you know, basically the game just started. Uh, and my opponent on the very first play ran a cover one man. So, the very first play that I'm going to go to, if I want to score quickly, hit a one play touchdown, it's going to be that PA seems play one more time. I make a slight mistake though, which kind of cost me. I accidentally flipped the play. It's a very important tip. It's a very small tip. You want to run the play to the open side of the field, but you want to make sure you're doing it to the two wide receiver side if you're using this formation. This formation has a tight end on that spot. Uh, I don't trust him to make the play. So if you do this, if you make this mistake, it's going to cost you. I don't have time to fix it. I flipped the play. You can see my opponent. He's going to go to that side. He's going to cover that side, which a lot of times people will cover the open side of the field. You can try to run this short side. It is explosive enough. But I'm just going to go double zigs. I was reading zig the entire way because the short side of the field, I'm just not going to get that pass lead. You can see this receiver. He gets outside, but if I try to lead him outside, he's probably going to hit the boundary. So you have two things that are really important. Number one, run it to the two wide receiver side every time. It won't work if you run it with the tight end. And two, make sure that you're running it uh, to the open side of the field, which you know a lot of people might be smart enough to sniff out the open side of the field. If you're a good defender, you're definitely thinking about it. And after you get beat one time, you're definitely going to be thinking about it. Uh, but ultimately, that's the way you want to run it. So on the very next play, once again, run to the open side of the field. I make my zig adjustment one more time because I was expecting another man coverage. And then sure enough, as I see he's running by himself, I know right away it's not a man, it's a zone. When you're watching zigs, if they're running it by themselves, then you know it's an actual zone coverage, which it was. It was a zone cover two. Uh, and this receiver still gets outside of that, even without making any adjustments. You can see that he's outside. So I just have to basically bullet pass lead outside, and then boom, he's getting outside of the cover two, just like outside of the cover three just like it gets outside of the man coverages it doesn't really matter that route is just going to beat just about any defense in the game outside of a cover four drop and you can see we get right down uh, inside the uh, inside the five. So if there was a play that I was to use a scheme with this, my second favorite play because of these short uh, routes is probably the bench concept. Um, it's a good play. I mean, these outside, you know, these short little out routes definitely beat man coverage pretty well. But you can see on this next play, he's still running man coverage. The second I run this, he's basically all over everything. And that's the thing. Man coverage shuts down just about most of these routes, which it didn't shut down in the past. They're not. Nobody's getting that separation the same way that the route is that I'm showing you. The A route probably has the most separation there. He has a tight little window, which I throw it in, I sneak it in, and I get the touchdown. But you can see the difference. No route beats man the same way that this route beats man. And it's just, it's unbelievable um, how, how glitchy this route is compared to other routes in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. If you guys want to see more videos like this, do me a favor, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.